Reinhold Messner, probably the most famous mountaineer in the world today. Along with Peter Habele, he made the first ascent of Everest without supplemental oxygen. He was the first to successfully climb all the 14 peaks over 8,000 meters above sea level that can be found on planet Earth. On top of this, he writes books on the history of mountaineering and conquering the polar regions. He founded the Messner Mountain Museum. He renovated Yuval Castle in Tyrol, and he stays there in the summer. You might meet him there. I've had the honor of filming with him several times, and this is from the latest meeting when he was in the Czech Republic presenting his book Fall of Heaven on the history of climbing the Matterhorn. He's 73 years old and has no problem considering himself a living history of mountaineering. What do you think about temporary mountaineering I think everybody's asking you. Still now it's pushing the borders just to uh, go on skis from the top of the mountains to do some... Probably the northern uh, wall of Eiger has been done in several hours. Yes, uh, another 40 minutes. Yes, terrible. Uh, Ulstek, I think yes, he did yes, it. Yes. Yeah, what, another one. They, they are in competition also two people. Yeah. Do you like it or do you feel it's uh, some kind of uh, selfish arrogance against the mountains? No, How do you no, feel? No, I think I am... I am an older man and I'm <laughs> looking from far away to the mountains. Uh -huh. And the big change meant in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. Mountaineering became global, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the rest of, of our behavior on this world. Now alpinism is global. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. South Africans are climbing. All over the world you find good climbers, top climbers. And this is one change meant. The next one is that there are many, many disciplines. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what is really growing in numbers is the sport of climbing, the sport of going up quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and of the, on the other side, the tourism. What's happening on the Matterhorn is tourism. Mm -hmm. This is not traditional alpinism, because traditional mm -hmm. alpinism uh, uh, is dependent on, on your own responsibility, mm -hmm. on a line where nobody else is existing. You can do uh, uh, traditional alpinism only where nobody else is acting, mm -hmm. there is no infrastructure, it means mm -hmm. also no piton or no fixed ropes and no uh, huts. And this, uh, this is the most important part of the alpinism. Mm -hmm. Because this is the alpinism where you have an adventure, where you learn something about yourself. And this is maybe not anymore growing, but it's growing in capacity, because mm -hmm. young climbers, they train in the climbing hall, in the gymny room, they they run up the mountains. Yeah, yeah. So if they go out of the, I would say, touristic and sportive activity, and they really go in in uh, traditional alpinism, they do great things. Alpinism is still evolving. Mm -hmm. Still, mm -hmm. uh, young people are able to do something which the generation, my generation, for example, said this is impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the big growing is on the sportive side. 90% of the climbers, they go only in the climbing hall. And that's a beautiful sport, mm -hmm. but has nothing, zero, to do with traditional alpinism. All right. And what's happening on Everest is tourism. Mm -hmm. So the Sherpas, three, four hundred Sherpas, works for weeks to put up an infrastructure. They mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. put up a pista, like for skiing, mm -hmm. not so wide, maybe a meter, meter wide, mm -hmm. with fixed ropes, with... Uh, ladders with uh, bridges, with camps. They can pull anything. Anybody. They don't pull them up. Dogs. The people, has, the people have to go up by themselves. Uh -huh. But they are, they are uh, care, somebody cares about them. Mm -hmm. Sherpas, guides, uh, doctors, uh, cooks. The mountain is full of people. Mm -hmm. When I was there, our base camp was yeah. 20 by 20 meters. Now the base camp is two kilometers long mm -hmm. and one kilometer wide. Yeah, that's a city. There are 1,500 tents in the base camp. Yes. The, the second camp is high up in the middle of the of the mountain, but it's a flat place. The first, the second camp is uh, like a small city again. Yeah. I remember in 2003, I have been in Kathmandu. I have seen you and uh, Edmund Hillary both disappointed and yes. sad. <laughs> now we went to the king we, in, in 2003. We went together to the king and said, this is not intelligent what you do. There's tourism on Everest. Okay, we understand that the Sherpas are living out of it. They mm -hmm. need this uh, kind of tourism. And, and it's very important for them because they have a Yeah, but uh, I think it would be a bigger success if you leave Everest as a mystical mountain, high mm -hmm. mountain, only possible for a few people. Mm -hmm. 
And so much more trekkers would come. They mm -hmm. would come to the base camp and say, wow, mm -hmm. I would never go up there. Yeah, but the now they, they make up. Everest in a way that quite everybody can go up. Mm -hmm. It's very costly. You pay a lot yes, of money. Yes, yes. You go to a, a agency, a, a, a tourism agency, and you buy your... Yeah. Uh, you have still to go up. It's not. I don't criticize it. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not intelligent. Mm -hmm. Because we take away from the mountain the spirit which is the mountain giving to the people. And uh, what what uh, I feel if um, somebody pulls me up on Everest and uh, I get the oxygen and maybe a chef is carrying the, the bottles and I have only the mask, mm -hmm. uh, I go up like a blind uh, figure. It's not a steak, it's hamburger. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's, not my, it's not my word, but okay, the evolution is this and I'm only describing it. Mm -hmm. All right. And I go further to, to speak in my books about the evolution of rock climbing, mm -hmm. about the evolution of traditional mountaineering, but I am not anymore counting all these people which are going on a pista on Everest. This, all right. All right. this is tourism and is, I have no interest in. At the time when young Reinhold started rock climbing, nobody considered it a meaningful activity. His despotic father punished him for his climbing trips and was convinced that his son was growing up to be a good-for-nothing. A decent man should look after a farm and not care about useless climbing. However, Reinhold did not give up and became a co-creator of modern alpinism. This was how many poor peasants became rich guesthouse keepers and the disobedient son became a world-renowned mountaineering icon. He's the author of dozens of books, many of which deal with the history of mountaineering and Arctic exhibitions. Some 30 titles have been translated into the Czech language. Now, if you look back, would you climb some mountain a different way? Or if, if we play the game like this, uh, of course? Uh, I cannot go back, especially, and I was also a child of my time. Yeah, mm, yeah, and you have been a uh, terrible child. You have been yeah. changing many things, yeah, and no. you had a tough days. I yeah, I had also a lot of critics because I was the first one, especially in Germany, mm -hmm. to say it's over with nationalism in the mountains. Mm -hmm. In the thirties, twenties, and thirties, in the fascist country in Italy and in Germany, the climbers were seen as heroes, mm -hmm. and they had to say, "We are not afraid. We are don't any. We don't have any fear." We go up to, to die because we like to succeed for the country and we put up the German swastika on the summit of Nangapa, but uh, crazy. I was the first one to say it's, it's over, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. When I came home from Everest, uh, they did a big uh, fest for me with 3,000 people and the politician was speaking and she said, finally a South Tyrolean messenger brought up our flag on Mount Everest. And they answered, no, I did not bring up a flag. I would not even know which one. Mm -hmm. I went up without any flag and I will never take flags with me. And I took out my handkerchief and said, in case of emergency, my handkerchief is my flag. And it, I became critics, you have no idea. Hundreds of pages in the papers. Uh, they, they, they put a shit on me. You never had a flag with you? No. On, on no, no trip. It's very, yeah. you know, I didn't realize it. Yeah, the, and there's no photo of, yeah. definitely no photo of there you. There's one photo where I have really the handkerchief on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> now it's very popular to say that the position of men in society is weak. That the, men, uh, the importance of men is getting down and the yeah. importance of women is going up. What do you think, what is the weakest part or the weakest point of mankind, of, of men? But generally, I am. This is not an issue for me. Uh, you don't I am. Care. I am. Uh, I tell the, uh, my truth. Uh -huh. this, my truth. So I would say that there is no big fun up there. Mm -hmm. You are far away. It's very cold. You have headaches. Uh, your breath is going very, very quickly. So uh, normally you have pains in. in mm -hmm. I, I speak about. Hi, hi, yes, hi. Yes, yes, over, over 8,000. Uh, going on the Matterhorn is a good day and not many people on the mountain and maybe I reach uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. That's a great moment. But mm -hmm. this is not like on Everest. On Everest, the situa situation is different. Mm -hmm. And you are far away from safety and you feel it if you go mm -hmm. in a traditional way to these uh, mountains. And uh, I speak also about my fear. Mm -hmm. And I need only courage because I have also fear. But all this heroic... Uh, Chatting, 
for me is terrible. It, yes. And yes. I, the whole, yes. all my books are especially speaking against it. And on the other hand, uh, what do you think about, because many pages have been printed by uh, ethic duty to help yeah. uh, other mountaineers uh, having problems in this. What do you think? Do you feel it uh, that it's even possible to help anybody in these conditions? I, I have done now a film on a uh, story in Africa, mm -hmm. which really happened in 1970. And I tell it exactly uh, what happened. One fell. And the other one tried to help him, but he could not on the end. And both are still alive, both survived. After seven days, a special group from Innsbruck was able to go down with a charter plane mm -hmm. and to get it. Uh, the man dying down from the mountain, and mm -hmm. he survived. And the man who was not injured is telling in front of the camera, on the end, I was praying that he would die. Yes, yes. And we could uh, enter the mountain. Mm -hmm. And the other one said, I was ready to die. I was trying to cut my rope because he, mm -hmm. he put me on yes, a pit yes, 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 yes. to go down from the mountain. It, it was too, uh, too hard for me to, uh, to have mm -hmm. all this pain and so on. And I tried to tell the, the story. You will never find in my books, especially mm -hmm. in the last 45 books, mm -hmm. one word about right or wrong. There mm -hmm. is no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. In alpinism, it's only possible or impossible. Yes, yes. In evolution, but only in also in caring about the others. If you can bring that, down somebody, you will do it because you can save yourself better if you have another one mm -hmm. together. But if you cannot save the other one, you will save your life, and you are right to save your life. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and all these ethics. Yes. There is a lot of lies behind. And especially the, the big comrades in Germany, we speak about comradism, mm -hmm. comrades. Mm -hmm. If you study the whole stuff, often they tried everything to destroy the other personality. Not to kill them, but to destroy it. Mm -hmm. Alpinists are normal people. <laughs> they are not heroes and they are not uh, from the moral side better than others, generally speaking. Rescue people, okay. They, yeah. they do it as a profession or as a free... Um, profession. But anyway, they, they have to go if somebody is in, in, in trouble. But today they go with the helicopter and normally it's not so difficult anymore. But any, any time, if two people are going to do a great deal in the Himalayas, where nobody is around, they, if they don't have any communication systems, they are on, them, on themselves. And they will try to survive together. Because we have a necessity to help each other. Mm -hmm. This is an inner rule. We have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because human beings can only survive in groups. We are social beings. Mm -hmm. But if something is happening, uh, on the end, the self-saving um, is the biggest force in, the, in, in ourselves. Otherwise, humanity would not exist. All right. You have experiences from expeditions and even the team expeditions, uh, yeah. for example, Nanga Parbat or many Nanga others. Parbat, yeah. And you have experiences from uh, business sphere as well, from politics as well. Uh, and I think now in Europe there is just a big demand on a leader. What What is your personal opinion? What should be the uh, parts of personality of a good leader? I think what we are missing in the moment is the the trust the trust from the people to the politicians. There's, there's good politicians in Europe, not all of them, but many. But now the people are losing trust in politics, generally. <coughs> And I think this is becoming our big problems. Mm -hmm. And a, a, a good leader is a person which is uh, chosen by the, by the public f uh, with trust, it should be uh, trust. Our leaders are chosen by the people, mm -hmm. but they choose people that don't, ha they don't have trust in it. There's not only a, f a failure of the politicians, it's also a failure of, the, of, the, of, of us, of the voters. So is there any motivation in Europe um, for anything? Generally, uh, uh, for example, if in, in a democracy, a president is voted. I was totally against Berlusconi in Italian, mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. I also spoke openly before the votes. Uh, against him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he was voted, and afterwards he said he's also my president. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I am a Democrat. Also, Trump is voted. Yeah, definitely, he is. 
And so he is the president of the Americans in the moment. And they have to see if they can cope with it, and we will see what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, next time they have the possibility to, to catch him out. That's democracy. Mm -hmm. and, and there is no other way than to accept it? But the, the, the problem is now that uh, we have uh, right-wing uh, politicians, they come up and they will win. And uh, If they go away afterwards, we will see. Look what is uh, going on in Turkey. Reinhold Messner was born on the 17th of September 1944 in Brixen. He is an Italian mountaineer of German nationality. I will now try to name his greatest achievements. I've already mentioned that he was the first one to conquer all of the 14 peaks over 8,000 meters above sea level, and that together with Peter Habele, they were the first to reach the peak of Mount Everest without any supplemental oxygen. On top of that, he also made the first solo ascent of Mount Everest. He was also the first one to conquer, without supplemental oxygen, the seven summits, i.e. the highest mountains of all continents. He crossed Antarctica, Greenland, the Taklamakan Desert and the Gobi Desert. However, he says that failure is the most important thing as it moves one further. Let us mention that he, for example, didn't manage to cross the Arctic from Russia to Canada, even though he tried. He considers his greatest achievement the fact that he's managed to survive to the present. Uh, do you have your own vision about the future of the world? Because nobody, nobody can say surely what will happen. So, just you have your imagination how it will develop in the next ten years, maybe. No, I can only say it will develop in maybe ten thousand to hundred thousand years. There is no doubt that the nature mm -hmm. will survive. Human beings, in the moment, they have the chance to kill themselves, all of them. We destroyed the sea. This is maybe the biggest problem we have. Not either the air, not, not the climate. This is also a problem with the global warming. This is a smaller problem than what happened in, in, in the oceans. Mm -hmm. We have today, in the number, we are seven uh, billions, we have the power to destroy our habitat. But if we destroy it, we, dis we are not able to destroy nature. Life, mm -hmm. life will come again. And other animals, they will be big numbers and they will take over. I remember maybe 15 years ago, uh, uh, we both have met on Yuval, on your castle, and uh, we have been talking, and you have been talking about self-sufficiency yeah. to be able to stay alone all right. So just uh, having I, everything. Uh, Do you still keep the way? Yes, yes. I bought it for this. I bought this farm to be self-sufficient. And we have wood for heating, we have meat, vegetable, fruit. Um, bread, ever. we produce everything. We, we don't have peace in the moment, moment for having sugar. We don't have, but we could easily get yeah. peace. And that time you said that you don't have your own coffee and your own tea. No, this is not so important. <laughs> yeah, no, no coffee, no, no tea, but enough wine and uh, f uh, for, for a few decades. Because I have also wine. <laughs> yeah. And all my brothers and their families could come on this farm and we could survive. Mm -hmm. And hundred years ago in the Alps and in most, uh, all over Europe, people survived like this. They were self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Do you know the movement of preppers? No. Uh, these are people who are getting ready, who are preparing themselves for uh, the big collapse, for the gap yeah. in energy, economic, business. Uh, and it's quite strong and getting stronger, this movement. Probably you are one of the founders. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, but you see, I, I say it with a loving eye. With a, with a happiness. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's nice to have it. I hope that my children are able to bring it further to understand what it is, because economically it's not, um, it's not getting zero, zero. It's less than zero, zero. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I bring it ahead with a family living there, because I am not there, and in my family nobody is willing to do this work, to bring the cattle home and to do this and this. But they can live easily on this farm. They sell the products on the, on the plate. Mm -hmm. and in the glass, so it's also a restaurant there. But for me, it's only a safety in case of emergency. But I'm not co concretely planning to go back there because there is no emergency. Mm -hmm. And I think during my life it will not be emergency, like such an emergency that we would have to go back. Mm -hmm. And in case we have to go back, there will be a civil war in Europe, all over Europe, mm -hmm. and you're not safe up there. 
they come with the, with the Kalashnikov and say, give me your ship. And you will give. give and you will give. And you, you have no chance to, to alone to, to defend yourself. No chance. And this is much, this is the problem we, we get. That we get civil war, like in other places we have them. And if the Europeans are not understanding that Euro, Europe is a first line, is a peace project. Mm -hmm. A very, very successful peace project. And if we divide again, here a nation, here a nation, here a nation, and they are in competition which is all on the end, we have a civil war. It's great. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you.